Hey Stock Explorers, welcome back to the Deep Dive. Today we're going to take a look at Anavex Life Sciences. Um, and uh, we've had a lot of listener interest and research on this company, so let's dive into it. Yeah, there's definitely um, a lot of buzz around Anavex right now, and, and for good reason. I think one of the things that makes them really stand out is their focus on something called the Sigma-1 receptor. Okay, so most Alzheimer's <laughs> treatments that we've seen so far... They usually go after amyloid plaques or or tau tangles, right? Like those those are the the protein clumps that kind of build up in the brain. Right, exactly. And so, you know, most companies are focusing on trying to clear those out. So is Anavex taking kind of a different approach here? Yeah, they are. Instead of kind of cleaning up the mess, so to speak, they're trying to prevent it from happening in the first place. So I stop it before it starts. Exactly. Yeah. And and the way they're doing that is by activating the Sigma one receptor. And what that seems to do is trigger the cell's natural cleaning process. Um, it's called autophagy. And so you can kind of think of it like like telling your cells to take out the trash before it piles up. Exactly. Yeah. A perfect analogy. So instead of letting all that trash build up and cause problems, the cells are constantly getting rid of it before it can even accumulate. Okay, that makes sense. But how does that actually like translate to real benefits for patients, especially those with Alzheimer's? Well, I mean, that's that's the million dollar question, right? I mean, we all know the effects of Alzheimer's, huh. um, you know, memory loss, confusion, difficulty with everyday tasks. I mean, it's it's really devastating. Yeah. And what Anavex is trying to do is slow down that decline, right? So their lead drug candidate is called Blarcomazine. And they've shown in clinical trials that it can actually slow down that cognitive decline. So there are measurable results. Yes. And in one study, patients taking blurcomazine, they actually declined 36.3% slower than those taking the placebo. And this was over 48 weeks. Wow, 36.3% slower? That's a, that's a pretty huge difference. It is. It is significant. And I think, it, you know, to put it in perspective for somebody who is dealing with this disease, you know, it could mean the difference between living independently for a few more years versus needing full time care. Yeah. It could be the difference between remembering loved ones names or or following a recipe or just being able to navigate familiar surroundings. It's like holding on to those pieces of yourself for just that much longer. Exactly. And and that's what Blarcomazine has the potential to do. I'm curious though, does it only work on the Sigma 1 receptor or are there are there other mechanisms of action going on? It's interesting because it actually has a dual mechanism of action. So it also works on something called muscarinic receptors. Okay. And those play a really crucial role in learning and memory as well. So is it kind of like the communication lines between brain cells? Exactly. Yeah, you can think of them like that. And you know what happens in Alzheimer's is that those communication lines start to get disrupted. And blarcomazine seems to help kind of restore those connections. So it's almost like a two-pronged attack. You know, reducing the buildup of those toxic proteins, but then also enhancing the communication between brain cells. Yeah, I think that's a great way to put it. It's not just about symptom management. It's actually about trying to modify the course of the disease. It's about getting to that root cause. Exactly. And I think that's what makes it so promising. You know, it's a potential game changer in this whole Alzheimer's landscape because we really haven't seen anything like this before. So you mentioned blarcomazine as their lead drug candidate. What stage of development is it in right now? And, and when could we realistically see this hitting the market? Well, they've already submitted a marketing authorization application to the European Medicines Agency. Okay. And it was accepted for review late last year. Wait, wh why Europe first? I mean, wouldn't they want to target like the U.S. market? That seems like a much larger market. That's a good question. It's definitely strategic on their part. I think, um, you know, there are a few reasons why they might have done that. You know, one is that the EMA may have a faster review process, particularly for drugs that address unmet medical needs, like Alzheimer's. That makes sense. Right. So there's that. And then also, you know, once they get approval in Europe, they can start gathering real world data, which can then support a future FDA submission. Oh, so it's kind of like a strategic stepping stone to get to that U.S. market. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But, you know, assuming that they do get approval, how does blarcomazine compare to the existing Alzheimer's treatments that are already on the market? Well, you know, there are a few key differences. I think with the more traditional Alzheimer's drugs, things like colonesterase inhibitors, NMDA antagonists, those really focus mainly on symptom management. So they might improve memory or cognitive function for a bit, but they're not actually slowing down the disease itself. Exactly. Right. OK. And then you have the newer antibody treatments, which those directly target the amyloid plaques. Mm -hmm. They've shown some promise, but they also come with potential safety concerns and, and those require intravenous infusions. 
which can be yeah inconvenient and and also very costly for patients. Exactly right. So how does blarcomazine kind of compare to that? Well, blarcomazine is an oral medication, and it's taken once a day, which is you know a lot more convenient for patients. Yeah. And so far, the safety profile looks really good. Okay. You know, they've reported mild side effects in clinical trials, but nothing too serious. So potentially safer, easier to administer. And it's going after those underlying disease mechanisms. Right. I mean, it sounds like it could be a real game changer. It definitely has that potential. But, you know, we always have to remember that these clinical trials are still ongoing and there are always risks involved. Absolutely. Yeah. But let's say everything goes perfectly and Blarcomazine gets approved in both Europe and the U.S. How big could this market actually be for Anivex? Well, that's where things get really interesting. If you look at the current market for Alzheimer's treatments, it's already huge, and it's projected to grow even more significantly in the coming years. Why is that? Mm. Well, unfortunately, the number of people with Alzheimer's is increasing as the population ages, and right now, there's no cure. We only have treatments that can slow down the progression or just manage the symptoms. So there's a massive unmet need out there for something that actually works. Absolutely. And that's where Anavex sees this huge opportunity, even if Blorchemazine only captures a small percentage of that market. The revenue could be massive. Yeah. I mean, it could be billions of dollars in revenue. And, and you know, we haven't even talked about their second drug candidate. Oh, right. Anavex 371. Yes, which is even earlier in development, but it has the potential to be even more impactful. And that's something we can delve into in the next part of our deep dive. This is getting me really excited about the possibilities here, but let's wrap up our discussion on Blarcomazine for now. What are some key takeaways that you want our listeners to remember about this drug? I think the most important takeaway is that Blarcomazine is a fundamentally different approach to treating Alzheimer's. It's not just about managing those symptoms. It's about trying to target those underlying mechanisms of the disease and potentially even slowing or stopping its progression. Yeah, and that's a huge step forward. It is. And it really sets Anavex apart from many other companies that are in this space. For sure. And with those clinical trials progressing and potential approvals on the horizon, this is definitely a company worth keeping an eye on. So join us for part two, Stock Explorers, as we dive into Anavex's second drug candidate, Anavex 371, and explore the potential of this really groundbreaking company even further. Welcome back, Stock Explorers. So in part one, we were talking about Anavex and their approach to Alzheimer's with Blarcomazine targeting that sigma-1 receptor. Right, and and you also mentioned that they have another drug in their pipeline, NAVX371, and, and you even hinted that it could be even more impactful, so I'm really curious to hear more about this one. Yeah, Anavex X371, it kind of builds on that same foundation as Blarcomazine, but it yeah. takes it a step further. Okay. So not only does it target the sigma-1 receptor, but it also targets the M1 muserinic receptor. Okay, remind me again, why are those two receptors so important when it comes to neurodegenerative diseases? Yeah, so remember we were talking about those communication lines between brain cells. Yeah. And those are crucial, you know, for learning, memory, cognitive function. Right. And the M1 muscarinic receptor is one of the key players in making sure those signals are transmitted effectively. And, and with Alzheimer's, those lines start breaking down, right? Exactly, yeah. The connections between those brain cells, they weaken, yeah. and that leads to the cognitive decline that we see in Alzheimer's patients. And Anavig X371 is trying to strengthen those connections. Exactly, yeah. By targeting that M1 receptor, it could potentially help strengthen those connections and, and improve that communication. So it's like a two-pronged attack on Alzheimer's. You've got the Sigma-1 receptor clearing out those toxic proteins, and then you have the M1 receptor boosting that brain cell communication. I love that. That's a great way to put it. It's a really clever approach, and the preclinical data has been really encouraging. Okay, so what have they seen in the preclinical studies? Well, in animal models of Alzheimer's, ANAV X371 has been shown to reduce those amyloid plaques, those tau tangles, and also, very importantly, reduce brain inflammation. Wow. And we know that inflammation plays such a huge role in a lot of neurodegenerative diseases, right? It really does, yeah. It's like this fire that's constantly burning and damaging those brain cells. So to see NAVX371 calming that inflammation is a really positive sign. And you mentioned earlier, too, that this drug may have long-lasting effects. What exactly does that mean? Yeah, this is one of the really exciting aspects of NVX371. So studies are suggesting that its effects may actually persist even after the treatment is stopped. So patients might not need to take the drug continuously. Which, you know, could potentially reduce side effects, improve quality of life even further. Exactly right. So if this holds true in humans, it could really change how we approach Alzheimer's treatment. Of course, we have to be cautious. It's still really early days. Absolutely. 
those preclinical findings still need to be confirmed in human trials. For sure, right? There's a lot more work to be done, but I think those initial results are really generating a lot of excitement in the scientific community. Yeah, so what is the timeline looking like to get Adobavix 371 into human trials? So they're currently conducting some additional preclinical studies just to gather more data, fine tune that dosing regimen for human trials. Okay. And they're hoping to file an investigational new drug application with the FDA soon, and that would allow them to start those clinical trials. So potentially we could see ANFXX371 entering human trials within the next year or so. Potentially, yeah. But of course, you know, the regulatory process can be a little unpredictable. Always. So we'll have to just wait and see how things progress. Okay, so we've got these two potentially really groundbreaking drugs in this pipeline. Yeah. But developing and commercializing drugs, it's expensive, especially for a smaller company like Anivex. Right. So what does their financial situation look like right now? Well, they've been very strategic with their finances. They do have a decent cash runway right now. Okay. But they will most likely need to raise some additional funding to keep those trials moving forward. We were talking earlier about how the revenue from Blarkamazine could potentially be significant if it gets approved. Right. Could they use that revenue to help fund the development of Anivx371 and other future projects? Absolutely. I think if Blarkamazine is successful and it generates a lot of revenue, that could create a sustainable funding source for them, okay. which would allow them to really advance their entire pipeline without having to re rely so heavily on dilutive fundraising. That would be a huge win for patients and investors. It would be, but of course, you know, there are always risks in the biotech world. Right. Dr drug development is inherently uncertain. There's no guarantee that Blarkamazine or Anivx371 71 will ultimately be successful. That's a really crucial point. Mm. So what are some of the key risks that investors should be considering when they're evaluating Anavex as a potential investment? Well, I think the biggest risk, as always, is the uncertainty of those clinical trials. Okay. There's always a chance that those promising results that we've seen so far 